Hi, I'm Anupam Chander. I'm a law professor at the University of California, Davis, where I teach international law and I teach cyber law. I'm interested in how robots and smart things generally intersect with borders. Borders are how we demarcate law. One law on this side, another law on the other. But what if the law on one side differs from the law on the other side? What if one law says that a Google car can operate on public streets, while the other side is not so clear? What if one law simply regulates the object differently, requiring different, say, decision-making or privacy practices? Does the Google car freeze in its tracks? This, of course, is a problem we have long known in the world of goods. Different goods have different rules across the world. But it's a more acute problem with respect to robots because of two things. First, robots are being introduced into a consumer environment in ways that are entirely new. Different jurisdictions have responded differently to this. Return to automated cars. Just in the US, for example, a handful of states have legalized automated driving, while a handful of states have rejected attempts to legalize it. So can a Google car cross from California, where it's legal, into Oregon, where perhaps not so much? The problem is even worse at the international level, where many states have, many countries, have simply not even begun to consider how to regulate or how to apply their laws to robots. Second, this new class of objects have capacities that have not been anticipated by legislatures or courts. In particular, they raise two principal legal concerns. One, liability, and two, privacy. Who will be liable when smart objects cause harm? Will our privacy be compromised when smart objects are ubiquitous in our lived environment? The answers to these questions are especially likely to vary across the legal landscape. In the world of traditional objects, companies have often accommodated different laws by making their goods conform to all laws simultaneously, because that's typically cheaper than making different goods for different jurisdictions. Lawyers even have a name for this. We call this the California effect, borrowed from the fact that California's environmental rules for cars became the de facto national standard as auto manufacturers simply designed their cars for the U.S. market to satisfy California's requirements. But this may be more difficult for smart objects. Privacy rules, for example, might differ across the world. Some rules may require data retention for a specific period for, for law enforcement purposes, while others may require data to be flushed as soon as possible because of privacy concerns. Some may require data to be stored locally in the same jurisdiction as the human being. That is, the robot may have to rely on local brains rather than remote offshore data processing centers. Lawyers typically approach the question of cross-border movement of things from the perspective of international trade law. This is the international law that countries have agreed to in order to promote international trade. The law typically bans countries from rejecting foreign-made goods. That's its goal. But what if instead of banning a good because of its thing nature, its good nature, we reject it because of its smarts? or because of the way it stores and processes information? That's the question I ask in my first paper in this area. Uh, the title of that paper is Robots, the Internet of Things, and the Future of Trade. The premise of the paper is as follows. The dumb objects of the past are being rapidly replaced by the smart objects of the future. The devices are connected to a global network of information, remembering, processing, and sharing data. Tire sensors that monitor your tires, even toothbrushes that monitor your teeth, all of which may rely upon data infrastructures that are located remotely. But these new kinds of objects raise tricky questions for international trade. First, what is a smart object? International trade law typically conceptualizes two different kinds of flows across borders, goods or services. Is a smart object a good? Is it a service? Or is it something else? If the Internet of Things offers eyes and ears, and robots, arms and legs, both of these technologies often depend upon brains and memories located far away. That's the nature of the remote sensor server architecture utilized both by the Internet of Things and cloud robotics. Thus, both of these structures rely on global flows of data. But that global flow of data is increasingly at risk because of concerns about privacy and security. I argue that we're likely to see the rise of a new kind of protectionism in regard to smart objects. History teaches us a lesson here. 
When we removed tariffs from goods in the last century, governments began to cleverly insert other barriers to foreign goods, hidden in national regulations. Indeed, I think that we'll now see a new generation of data rules that provide cover for protectionism. So after a century of liberalizing global trade in goods, we may be about to come to a century of limiting global trade in goods because of the smarts embedded in the goods. Increasingly, national laws are restricting the transfer of information outside the home country. So consider objects like a drop cam, a Fitbit, a Nest thermometer, or even a Google car, which all depend on the flow of data likely to the home country of their creators. Thus, the Internet of Things may find itself foiled by national borders so, uh, because it may run afoul of uh, privacy concerns. In a sense, then, robots may need passports to cross borders, and many may not receive them because countries want to promote their own robots instead of welcoming alien robots into their lives. It's possible, I think, to devise systems to protect privacy and ensure liability even while welcoming alien robots. I think that we should try to create legal infrastructures that allow robots to cross borders while ensuring consumer protection in the process. Thanks. I'd be excited to hear from you if you're interested in uh, this work. Uh, you can reach me at achander at ucdavis.edu. You can follow me at Anupam Chander at Twitter. Thanks.